to some of you. This is a very special broadcast, and of course, we must pray. And prayer we must, this very evening and always going forward. And I will pray in the language of heaven, because Chukuki Kabiyama is in control of all that we have been doing and will continue to do until Biafra is restored and all the suffering indigenous populations in the damnable zoological republic are set free. Chineke nan ke prumi yani ne chuko kika bambo yani ne fi wana jaya hanso ya mambu nine. Onyo bonani yana achi. Eli gano wana wakebe hona nyagi ne brega mragi no miko ye bende gene se bede ngozi. Anyi wene to yi. Abwa ne gato matuwa joni ne kendiro. Iwe nyanyi endo alakedi nuwe dono bo chinketa. And you will not send a jam money to the Nedra Han Sorry. Oh, no, Bonania, Kikin, and no Badrakaya. And you will not Okuri, Nassig and Kamamani get Kelly and Kojo Mani Kelly. And you will not Jagemma. When they told you when I saw Progi, Nisu Mugin in a Bundi Kundi way Zook and Baporaha. Can have a Chequa, a Lanso of the Afronium, Nachinek and Hinikuranian Quack. No make a take a no way we are lanso be afonyo na chine ken na ke bini go. Abu ane gato matu joni na ken di no. Mande na abu mo bebe ni ne di chi chonyo na chine ken na. Ni hene bun ken ni de tuano botin keta. Ani we ne toi. We na si onye wanyi na chine ken na ke prumi hene ine. Onyo bu na ni ana zopota. Onyo bu na ni ya bu opu ya ni ne bu ye na amen. Ani we na si eze bu peden kosi. Na ro tuto ne jamma na unsopuru. Si te ne bigi bi maru ne bigi. Ise. He said, he said, Welcome, my amazing viewers. Thank you so much for joining me on my program once again. I appreciate you wherever you are joining from. I thank you for your contributions on the channel. Please, if you have not subscribed, kindly subscribe to my channel. Click the notification bell so that you notify each time I upload a video. You will be among the first to receive it. Also, share the video to your family and friends. Share it to people who need to hear our voice. Share it to every angle. Go to the comment section, put your comments, make your argument. You can criticize if you so desire, but do it constructively so that you can learn from each other. That is why we are here. The most important reason why we are here is not to allow them to change the narrative. The most important reason why the agitators, the peer friends, the Ududuas are coming online on a daily basis to speak is because we do not want the conventional media to change the narrative. They are trying by all means possible to change the narrative, to paint the good evil and make evil good. And we will not allow them. We will continue to speak the way it is. Put the truth to the front runner. And we will not allow them to change it. It doesn't matter how they try. They will never succeed. It doesn't matter what they do. They will never move forward. We will continue to pull them down. And make sure that their evil doesn't fly. That is why we are here. And today, I am not going to waste your time. I want to share an information with you. For those of you who are still bent on asking questions on the case of Mazen and the Kam, how it is, what is happening, and how they are going. You see the media, they will always try to paint it. But I want, to know, I want you to watch this video. Watch it carefully and pay attention to the explanation of the lawyer. That is what I want you to pay attention. Do not mind what those people who call themselves the media presenters and they are doing. Don't mind whatever they say. Pay attention to the explanation of the lawyer. A lawyer who is speaking on the case of Martin Land Khan, the nature of the case, and the fate of the case. I want you to listen to that very video. Carefully from beginning to the end, at the end of it, go to the comment section and tell me what you think about the case. Let us watch. Thank you to Lagos based human rights and lawyer, Inibe F. Young. Inibe Kanu has raised a, a lot of puzzles here and is making 5 billion naira demand and is also demanding to be taken back to Kenya where he was arrested and taken to Britain again, where he's based. He's a dual citizen. Anybody, can you shed light into what Ma Zidna Bikanu is asking for? Good afternoon, and thank you for having me. The interesting part about this case is that it will offer the federal government an opportunity to come out clean on certain matters relating to Nam Khan that has been lingering since 2017. Uh, you know, as you have rightly said, 
there is a subsisting charge against him pending at the federal high court and while the, that case was pending you are also aware that it, there was documented evidence that some form of military activity took place at his residence where it was even reported that some of his supporters and followers were killed in the process and he fled the country supposedly to ensure that he was not murdered or he was not killed for his own safety as he has claimed now when the matter came before justice yako of the federal High court that is a criminal matter the terrorism charges or the treasonable felony charges the issue of his absence from trial was raised and that was why the court at that time had to determine whether certain sanctions should be imposed on his shorty mm. at that time his shorty had made the point that the person is too shorty for left the country involuntarily having been forced by the military following the invasion of his home there was never an opportunity or a clear opportunity or i, I would say just the the trial court the trial judge appears you know to have been a bit hesitant to go into the merit of that matter so for me this is a good opportunity for nigerians to know why that action had to take place in his residence even after he had been tried if it related to the terms of his bail, if the excuse or the defense of the federal government is going to be that he has breached the terms of his bail, then the question will be between the prosecutor, the federal government of Nigeria, and the court, who is in a position to determine whether the terms of bail was breached by Nam Dekanu in 2017 or not. The other aspect of this is the manner in which he was brought back into the country. From all that we know, subject to the findings of the court it does appear that he was brought back to the country against his will in other words there has been a chain a chain of activities from 2017 to date now ordinarily once somebody is standing trial and the person fails to appear for his trial the court has the power to revoke his bail which was what happened in this case and that person is liable to be arrested we will not be having this debate, this argument, if Nam Kano was arrested within the territory of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. But having left Nigeria, whether pro rightly or wrongly, whether through proper immigration process or not, within the context and the purview of international law, the Nigerian government does not have the power or the authority in law to bring him to the country for him to continue to face his trial without complying with certain prerequisites principal among these being the extradition process there is no evidence on record that not the kind was ever subjected to that process in kenya what they did is what is not national can you, law us, can, you us this, can you take us through this process because i was told from my findings the process of extradition is somehow long and cumbersome and we don't have any, as you said, we don't have any evidence that Inam Dekano was taken through this process. So his lawyers are claiming that he was abducted, that he was kidnapped to be brought to Nigeria for trial. I, I do agree with his lawyers because as that now, <laughs> a tradition is not something that, that is done in secret. It is a judicial proceeding. It's not something that is done behind the party that the subject of his tradition. If I am to be extradited to the U.S., look at the case of Abayari, for example, and that will take me to explanation of the process. Within Nigeria, if this were to happen in Nigeria, like the case of Abayari, we have the Extradition Act. And of course, there is also a tradition treaties between Nigeria and other countries in the world. Normally, when somebody is a subject of criminal investigation or is wanted by a foreign country for purpose of prosecution, on account of infraction, the government where the subject is residing has to go before the court in that country and file an application 
seeking consent of the court for that person to be forcefully taken out of that country into the country that is being sought. That is what extradition essentially means. Even when that process has been determined by that court, that person has the right of appeal. And I will refer you to the case of Obani Koro, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm not mistaken, to the Obani Koro who was wanted by the U.S. government. And even after a federal high court had given a decision, the matter went further to the court of appeal. You can also cite the case of Julian Azanga, right? Who is being wanted in part by the United States government. You see the process that he has to go through where the process has been ongoing. So the fact that it takes time is not a justification for the government of Nigeria to resort to this brazen, this arbitrary action. If Nigeria is a civilized country, if Nigeria is a member of the international community, look at what is happening in the case of Sunday Bowl. It is exactly the same thing. Benin Republic is now teaching Nigeria rule of law. And for me, that is an embarrassment to what is supposed to be the How? president of Africa. Because, because the government of Nigeria is looking for Sunday Boho, but the government of the Republic said, no, we cannot just allow you to take him without going through the process of extradition through a judiciary. That is the right that Nam Dekani was entitled to under the law. But whether this high court in Oka can give an order for Nam Dekani to be returned to Kenya as his lawyer has prayed for, or to the UK, is a very tall order. I'm not going to determine that, but I think they have a very a lot of argument to make to succeed on that point. But I do agree that if the court finds that indeed the process by which his home was invaded, the manner in which the military went to his house was wrong, then he is entitled to damages, is entitled to public apology. If the court also finds that the manner in which he was even brought to the country was wrong, that is also a violation of his right. But whether that is sufficient, whether that will be a legal basis for him to be taken back to the Kenya or to UK is a different thing. Why did why am I saying so? Why do you think the because federal government has a pending class? Why do you think the federal charge government the federal high court? What do you, do you think the federal government? Why do you think they are quiet on how it was brought in and where it was brought from? Is it this, the way, the manner in which it was brought in? That's why it's like a top state secret. Nobody is talking about it. They, they will now be forced. You, the good, that is why I started by saying that the good thing, or one good thing about this case, is that now the cannot throw his lawyers will now force the hand of the federal government. Because they have to file a counter for to the suit. And they must disclose the circumstances under which he was brought back to the country. They don't have a choice at this point. They have to disclose how they brought him back to the country. They have to also disclose what led to the invasion of his home. At this point, they do not have a choice. Because if the suit is not contested, the natural thing is for the, the country to involved. They, they, are, they are denying already. No, they can, they, they can deny it to Nigerians, but they cannot deny it before the court. Because if they are saying that they went through due process, they have to exhibit evidence of that due process. They have to demonstrate that there was an extradition process, which never took place. This couldn't have been done the way, you know, we know extradition process to work. But don't forget, I have told you that the Federal High Court, presided by Justin Yanko in Abuja, is also seized of the charge against him. And that court is a court of concurrent jurisdiction with the High Court of Anambra State. In other words, the High Court of Anambra State will, will not necessarily determine the incidence of the pending charge before the Federal High Court. That is why I'm saying that whether Nam Dekano will succeed in that aspect of his claim, I cannot really say. That is a tall order for them. But it is good that this case has been brought. It is an opportunity for I hope and I hope that the High Court will be courageous. Because this is one case that requires a lot of courage for the courts to look at the matter dispassionately. And if the federal government is found to have violated the process, to have violated his right to life by attempting to kill him, if that is actually shown and established and proved, or that his right to dignity of the human person was violated, that he was tortured, he has alleged, that his right to freedom of movement was infringed upon, Nam Dekanu is entitled to compensation and public apology. And the fact that IPOP was prescribed does not have any consequence on what I am saying. Because even the issue of prescription is still being litigated by the court in Nigeria. And, and let me make this point. Why is it that the federal government only records, made records to the court when it favored them? 
when they needed IPOC to be crushed so brutally, the government went and got an expert order to prescribe IPOC. But when they needed to bring back the dealer of IPOC to face trial, the government treated with this day that same due process. So we cannot have selective adherence to the rule of law. If you are saying that Nam Nikano has committed a <laughs> against Nigeria, yes, you must subject him to there. the due process of law. Thank you. Thank you for that insight. It's, uh, <laughs> tell me, it's really I, uh, fun because yeah. this case, at the end of the day, you know, the dimension you don't even expect is going to take the dimension. Because I've never really asked myself that, oh, you can't perpetrate illegality to say you won't because he's attending the trial, you want to try him. The way and manner in which you used to bring him back to the country will be talked about at a point in time. Yes, of course, the his lawyer would definitely ask some pertinent questions. That is the thing. But, you know, uh, in our job, what we do best is to simply we wait have. for the judicial uh, process to run its course, and then we are reporters, <laughs> we are not judicial officers. We will be here <laughs> to talk about it. Yes, uh, whatever and, happens. And don't forget that... Uh, uh, it's not only individuals that can be lawless or, or can commit crime. Even the state can be lawless. <laughs> you get my point? It's so very, that, very it, No, no. The, the state can be a rogue. The state can be anything. <laughs> if you don't follow the laws you know, of him, mm. hmm, then the state, remember the 1984 Umaru Diko saga? Mm, mm, you mm. get me? Even though we were under military mm. rule. This one, we didn't say it's the same thing, but whatever is the case, remember the case of Igbo. And don't forget that we are remember, pushing that one Remember the case of Igbo. Remember the case of Igbo. The state invaded its home mm -hmm. around, uh, you know, uh, the DSS. Uh, uh, the DSS. Uh, where is the state? So, and uh, you saw what happened. And for hours, nobody uttered a word until the media started, you know, uh, it's 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 and and video, uh, the video is everywhere. <laughs> there it was. I almost uh, after almost 24 hours before they started coming out. No, I uh, was even thinking that it will, that what we will hear was that unknown government <laughs> carried uh, out. That's it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, the, first, the first one on the booth, uh, home was attributed to unknown government. Yes, so so we thought uh, we the another one will be unknown <laughs> government. <laughs> but maybe because of that thing. No, because <laughs> there was a need to arrest. <laughs> So and and the second one the government, government don't arrest after watching this video what have you find out i must tell you i was screaming that they can have no case to answer in that contraption called nigeria he is a political prisoner and they are holding him against his will what i was saying deserve is an unconditional release with immediate effect and Nigerian government will pay fine to him and apologize for putting him through all the stress and putting him into. That is how the case is going to end. Mazen Nandikana has not committed any crime against Nigerian government. Neither has he committed any crime against Kenyan government. Neither have he committed any crime against anybody. He was just speaking out for the innocent people in the country of Nigeria, the indigenous tribe. More especially the Biafrans. He was fighting for them. Is it a crime to fight for your people? Is it a crime to speak up for what is good? It is, a, is it a crime to pursue the right cause? Is it a crime to tell people to do what is right? That is the situation. And I believe after watching this video, you must have known that Asuna Mazin has no case to answer in the contract from Kona Jire. Me chukwo kukabia ma kutu to bless Asuna Mazin Nandekano. Me chukwo kukabia ma kutu to guide and protect Asuna Mazin Me chukwo kukabia ma strengthen him, bring him back to us very, very soon. There is every tendency that Mazin Nandekano is coming out sooner than you expect. And very soon we are going to be celebrating in Biafra land with the Biafra flag lifted high, singing the national anthem of Biafra with our hands on our chest. Proud as Biafrans. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, bless. Bye bye. See you again on the next video.